Welcome to Mojo Plays. Today, we're looking at why the PS5 destroyed the Xbox Series X. <laughs> you serious? You already know this is going to be great. What's up guys? I hope you all are having a great day today, just full of positivity and happiness, dude, because, you know, we're going to be taking a look at a pretty interesting YouTube video here, to say the least. Now, the title of this video that we have the privilege of watching together here today is Why the PlayStation 5 is Destroying the Xbox Series X. <laughs> Now, this video is coming from a pretty large company on YouTube known as Watch Mojo, and more specifically, their Watch Mojo Plays gaming channel. Now, I'm pretty sure everybody watching this video here has probably seen a couple videos at least from Watch Mojo, and we all probably have kind of the same thought in the back of our mind. Their videos, pretty shit, dude. <laughs> like, they just mass upload random top 10 videos or like really clickbait trending topic videos like this one. And you know what? I think this should be a pretty good time, man, because I have to say, this is definitely one of their better videos that I've definitely seen, but you know, I don't really think we need much more of an introduction here, guys. I think we should go ahead and check out this absolutely fantastic YouTube video. Welcome to Mojo Plays. Today, we're looking at why the PS5 destroyed the Xbox Series X. Does Microsoft actually know how to make a console anymore? Finally, you would dream where you are now. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long. You know what? That is kind of the unfortunate truth here. Watch Mojo is uploading amazing content like this on a daily basis. So be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Or you could just drop a like on this video instead. The messy launch of the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S is set to continue into at least the summer of 2021, with very few people actually able to get their hands on a console. Wait, I'm pretty sure that both the Xbox and PlayStation 5 have beat sales records for like any Xbox or PlayStation that's released, so if anything, more people than normal have been able to get their hands on a console this early in the generation. But nah, dude, the Xbox is dead. But despite the fact that both Sony and Microsoft have sold their entire stock of machines, there's already a winner in the ninth generation console wars. I mean, if you want to take it there, then it's definitely Nintendo. At every step of the way, the PS5 has outsold, outshone, and outplayed the Series X. But exactly why has this happened? So wait, both the Xbox and PlayStation are sold out everywhere, and you're comparing sales data? Like, what is that going to prove? You literally cannot go to the store and buy one of these things even if you want it. I mean, right now, the only way you could actually attribute higher sales to the PlayStation 5 is because Sony has a bigger supply. When the consoles are out and they're, like, readily available on store shelves, then I think it's a fair comparison to make. But to be fair, I'm expecting a little bit too much from a watch mojo video seeing that top grill for the first time what's the french look at this while the ps3 and xbox 360 were more evenly matched the ps3 was generally more powerful but sales wise they were on equal footing for a long time no they weren't the ps3 was getting curb stomped for like three to four years and the 360 was absolutely dominating trust me i was unfortunate enough to be stuck with a ps3 i'd have to say that's probably my least favorite video game console i've ever owned and both had solid exclusives, Sony took the lead with the PS4, and that lead has been maintained ever since. Microsoft can't compete with Sony's reputation for having the best platform, and a huge part of that is console exclusives. Microsoft can't compete with them, yet they're competing with them every single day. Interesting. I mean, it really just makes you wonder about the big-brained individual who wrote the script for this video, bro. Does he have, like, a drip tray underneath his chin? You have completed this instructional video, and you are now part of the Xbox 360 family. Welcome. It's no secret that most Xbox exclusives aren't that good. I mean, personally, I'd rather play Gears of War or Halo than any Sony walking simulator, but hey, that's just me. Almost none of them are system sellers, and the Xbox One had an incredibly weak game library from the beginning, with forgettable launch titles like Dead Rising 3. And the PlayStation 4 was out there killing it, bro? Like, don't get it fucking twisted. I didn't buy an Xbox One at launch. I thought the console was dog shit. I got a PS4. But to say that the Xbox One had a weak launch lineup is complete bullshit. You 
had like Sunset Overdrive, you had Dead Rising 3, Rise Son of Rome, Forza Horizon 2, and on top of that you had Titanfall, which in my opinion is better than anything the PlayStation 4 had exclusive-wise the entire previous generation and this generation, but you know, that's my humble opinion, but to come out here and act like the PS4 was killing it since day one, when the only two games it launched with were Knack and Killzone Shadowfall, I mean, come on, bro, you're like, this is some next level dishonesty right here, like you cannot even compare what Xbox had in its first three years to what PlayStation had. Unfortunately, Xbox did not keep that same energy. But to come out here and act like Killzone, Shadowfall, and Knack were outshining games like Titanfall, Rise, Son of Rome, Dead Rising 3, Forza Horizon 2, and Sunset Overdrive, you're full of shit. Meanwhile, Sony has had some of the best video games in the industry and some of the best video games of all time with God of War, Ghost of Tsushima, The Last of Us, Uncharted, and Bloodborne all available on PlayStation. That's right, man. Only Sony has good video games. I mean, if you want to consider games that are regarded as some of the best of all time, I think Nintendo probably wears that crown. It's games like these that give serious gamers no other choice but to buy a PlayStation. So apparently you can only be considered a serious gamer if you want to play like over-the-shoulder, single-player, third-person action-adventure, like story-driven games. You know, if you enjoy playing multiplayer games primarily, sorry man, you cannot be regarded as a serious gamer. And for people who didn't get a PS4, Sony's PS Plus collection offers new PS5 players the best of the best. Many of its high-caliber games are there to download for PS Plus users. And Sony doesn't have plans to slow down anytime soon, focusing closely on putting out blockbuster exclusives that more than justify the price of a new console. Kind of ironic because until like 2023, all of these next generation games are also coming out on the PlayStation 4. <sighs> But it's not just that Microsoft exclusives aren't great, Microsoft has plenty of enormous franchises with huge player bases under its belt, like Forza and Halo, after all. It's that none of these games are Xbox exclusives, they're also available on PC. Again, it's pretty ironic that this video was actually made like a couple days after the fact that Sony announced that more of their games would be coming to PC, so I guess this point kind of applies to them as well, but why is it that more people being able to play a video game somehow devalues the console that you just went out and bought? Like, you can still enjoy those same games, unless you're just really that insecure that you need to know that no one else is allowed to play a video game unless they went out and bought the same console as you. Like, like, I just cannot relate to being that fucking pathetic. Unlike the vast majority of Sony's games. At least for now. Though Horizon Zero Dawn has appeared on PC, it's unclear whether this trend will continue for Sony. I think Jim Ryan, you know, the head of PlayStation, made it pretty clear days before this video was uploaded that the trend would continue. Yeah, but to be fair, I don't really know why I'm expecting any sort of knowledge on the subject matter from a Watch Mojo video. The massacre was only the beginning. Who did this to us? Game Pass is one of the only things Sony is losing to Microsoft over. How about cloud gaming or a share of the PC gaming market? I'd say those are pretty significant leads that Microsoft holds over Sony. I mean, Sony even pays Microsoft to run their cloud service for them. But even that is also available on PC. Oh my god, dude, more people get to use Game Pass? I'm canceling my subscription right now. Giving PC players access to all of Microsoft's IPs. Unlike both Sony and Nintendo, Microsoft hasn't given players any reason to buy an Xbox if they already own or are thinking of getting a PC instead. Yeah, and it's fucking great. Giving customers a choice is never a bad thing. You need a Switch to play Nintendo's polished and beloved games. And it's these games that form the basis of Nintendo's continued success despite putting out underpowered and more limited consoles. Are you literally praising Nintendo for keeping their games on one platform even though you just called the platform underpowered? I mean, just when you think the self-awareness can't get any fucking lower. PCs have other benefits over Xboxes too, like the fact that with a decent rig you can also play thousands of acclaimed indie games that won't ever come to consoles. I mean, I would definitely recommend you do go out and buy a PC, so yeah, go for it. And while PCs become quickly outdated, and while PCs become quickly outdated... I mean, I hope you're joking, right? Because, like, my 1080 Ti, which was, like, five years old, was still outperforming the PS5 and Xbox Series X before I got my 3090, so... Yeah, I don't really know about that one, Chief. But I really just want to know, like, what planet are you living on that hardware inside of a console somehow doesn't get as outdated as hardware in a PC? That literally makes no fucking sense. 
And while PCs become quickly outdated, practically every component is upgradable, so you'll still be able to keep pace with consoles, though it might be costlier in the long term. That's right, when I went out and bought my 3090, the number one concern in the back of my mind was, can I keep up with the consoles, dude? Like, who out here is spending money on a PC is, like, worried that their PC is gonna be outperformed by a console in a couple years? Like, here's a newsflash for you. Consoles do not get more powerful over time. When they come out, that's what they are for the next six to seven years. Just, like, there's no lie logic in this whatsoever. Like, if your PC is more powerful than the console when the console comes out, then your PC will always be more powerful than that console. Oh, but I'm sorry, guys. I'm forgetting about my SSD. The Xbox Series consoles have so far failed in other departments as well. The Xbox Series X, despite being on paper a far more technically impressive console with a marginally faster CPU, almost 2 teraflops more GPU power, and a larger SSD, has consistently underperformed against the PS5. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest here, I actually kind of agree with them on this point. You know, Microsoft, fix your shit. For whatever reason, developers haven't yet been able to eke out the same performance from the Xbox Series X that they've achieved on the PS5, even when running cross-platform games like Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I mean, while I agree on this overall point, I think Assassin's Creed Valhalla is probably the worst example to use to benchmark any two systems because Ubisoft has a known history of having some of the most unoptimized, buggy, terrible running video games in the entire video game industry. And this is in spite of games like Valhalla alleging that they are optimized for Xbox Series X. I think if we know anything about Ubisoft, it's that when they say their game is optimized, it just means it doesn't crash every three minutes. One big reason why this could be is that Microsoft sent out dev kits for new Xboxes much later than Sony, meaning developers simply had less time to optimize for Xbox. Because of this, we could see the performance situation change over the ninth generation. After all, the Xbox One X ended up being the most powerful console last gen, but it's impossible to predict. At the moment, if you're someone who cares about getting the absolute best performance possible, and a lot of people do, you'll need a PS5, not necessarily an Xbox. Are you fucking kidding me, bro? If you want the best performance possible, you need a PC. The difference between the PS5 and Xbox in terms of like graphics and everything like that is like almost fucking negligible. I have both a PS5 and Xbox Series X, and honestly, there's not really that big a difference. But perhaps the final killing blow for Microsoft has been the controller. Wait, what the fuck? The Xbox 360 controller is still widely regarded as one of the best controllers of all time, and Microsoft has definitely taken an if it ain't broke, don't fix it approach. Like, why would they change probably one of the most comfortable and widely loved controllers in the entire video game industry? This means that Xbox controllers have barely changed since the 360, while Sony has been innovating. The I mean, have you ever held a 360 controller compared to a PS3 controller? The PS3 controller feels like a Happy Meal toy, and on top of that, the PS4 controller had some serious issues, like the light bar would drain the battery way too quickly, the thumbsticks, like the rubber on top of them would peel off after a certain amount of time. Like, Sony had a lot of shit to fix with their new controller for the PS5. Microsoft? Not really so much. The Xbox Series controller doesn't match up to the new and exciting DualSense. You're right, the Xbox controller feels better. Which has been the biggest design shakeup for Sony in the entire history of PlayStation. Baby, baby, be waiting on me. How you doing? Woo! It is sleek, it is clean. Oh, man. With bells and whistles like the best haptic feedback in the business. Does anyone else turn off vibration when they play video games? Or is that just me? Because, like, literally, I do not give a shit about haptic feedbacks because I turn off the controller vibration anyway. I don't know. I guess keyboard and mouse has gotten me so used to not having something, like, vibrating in my hand that I just can't really go back. And adaptive triggers. The DualSense promises a gameplay experience Microsoft can't match currently. There are rumors that Microsoft is going to add more features to the Xbox controller in order to better compete with the DualSense, but only time will tell how good a job they do. I mean, personally for me, until Sony fixes their thumbstick layout, it's never gonna be my preferred controller. Like, even Nintendo has realized that the Microsoft layout for thumbsticks is a lot better. Like, the Switch Pro controller is infinitely more comfortable to use when you're playing, like, a shooter like Splatoon versus the PS5 controller. I don't know, like, it may just be the way I hold my PS5 controller, but I fucking hate it when I'm using the thumbsticks and my thumbs touch. And Microsoft is still producing expensive controllers that don't have rechargeable batteries. Xbox has severely fallen behind where controllers are concerned. Eh, I don't know about that one, Chief. You know, sometimes we're able to work with the teams to create, you know, meaningful designs that really celebrate the culture of gaming and, and gamers and our fans. Gaming. And so we're always proud to be able to contribute to that. I don't know what else to add to that. 
the Xbox Series consoles might have some things going for them, like the cheapest entry point into next-gen gaming and access to Game Pass, but Microsoft still hasn't been able to make a machine that is truly competitive against Sony's flagship console. And that's why the PS5 destroyed the Xbox Series X. PlayStation. Jesus Christ, man, it ended like feeling like I was watching a PlayStation commercial, which honestly wouldn't surprise me too much, but you know what, guys? That is how the Xbox was completely fucking destroyed by the PlayStation. You know, it's game over for Microsoft. They should go ahead and leave the video game industry right now, but I think it's kind of funny. I've kind of been on a streak recently of like doing these the end YouTube videos, bro, because like first it was somebody saying the end of PC gaming is here, then a PlayStation fanboy saying that PlayStation games coming to PC would be the end of the PlayStation brand, so you know, I defended PC, I defended PlayStation, now I'm defending Xbox. Now I just need to find somebody going all gloom and doom for Nintendo to complete the cycle here. But anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like on it. I would greatly appreciate it. And as always, I want to thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your day to check out this video and for all the recent support as well. You guys are the fucking best and I really do appreciate it. So with that said, I will catch you guys next time.